All right, well, I'm back on the Monitor Audio RSW12. The customer did approve the estimate. So now I've got to figure out how this thing comes apart because it looks like one piece extruded aluminum, but I believe that this piece comes completely off of the rest of the hot plate right here. And the reason I believe that is because if I look right down in here, I see some screws anchoring this portion of the heat sink to this portion of the heat sink. Plus, I'm seeing a couple screws up here, one right there, one right there, and two more down here. So I think if I remove these six screws, I can gain access to the other side of those four screws and we can actually get this main power amplifier board up and out so we can go ahead and get these little sub boards off of here and test those little surface mount capacitors that live on there. So hopefully it'll be an easy thing to do. Well, with any luck now, as I go ahead and lift this off, it will leave something behind. And it did. It left the little heat sink behind. Now look at that. There are the four screws I need to get to, plus a plethora of other screws around here that we're going to have to get out. All right, now with any luck, we can just lift that off of the board. Hopefully it's just got a small amount of adhesive attached. Yes, look at that. And then we can actually get to some of these capacitors. I am a little worried about these chips that they've glued down, but hopefully it's non-conductive glue so we won't have any issues with that. But let's start by removing all these boards. I believe these two are probably identical boards. And then obviously this one is going to be different. So I'm kind of hoping this will actually show up, but if you look at the heat sink material that someone smeared across that, Actually, it looks like they did a pretty good job of smearing it around. There's the other mating surface. It was barely making contact. So we're going to have to do something about that. Or that or make sure they get the screws actually tightened up. I'm not sure if they actually tightened them or what, but there's the extent of the heat sink compound coverage to transfer the heat from that digital amplifier back to that heat sink on the back of the unit. Absolutely terrible. Shame on you, monitor audio, for such a crappy job. And it actually looks like, if you look very close, you can actually see a mark right there where it was aluminum to aluminum, and a mark right there also where it was aluminum to aluminum. But other than that, no real contact. All right, well, here's one of the boards out of the unit. And as you can see, it has two 22 microfarad caps at 16 volts and one, one at 50. But look at this, that's epoxy. They epoxied over these chips so you couldn't tell what the part numbers were on them. Kind of proprietary. I don't think it was to hold them down or anything because they didn't do an adequate job whatsoever. And then they epoxied over the diode, but not the leads just so you couldn't read what the voltage was or what the nomenclature on the diode is. But there's a way to get around epoxy and it's fairly time consuming and tedious, but I'll show you real quick here. So if you just take a hot soldering iron, you can actually just work through this. So you can see I've already gained access to that one lead right there. You just want to take your time. Well, I'd say that's good enough that we can actually get access to it now. And at least we can twist it off of the board and replace it. 8.2, 8.3 ohms on one of the 22s. 7.3 on the other one, a little high in my book. And 7.5 on the one. I wonder if they might be somehow in parallel with each other. 
Well, unfortunately, my selection of 22 microfarad capacitors is extremely low and I need to reorder because I need to replace nine of these 22 microfarad caps on all three boards combined. And as you can see, I have seven of the Jamicon 105 degrees Celsius caps. All the other ones are just some generic 85 degree caps and I really don't want to use those. We're going to have to end this and pick it up at a later date after I receive some capacitors in to replace all of the caps on this customer's board. And since we're here and I want to do a thorough job for this customer, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of these capacitors on the input board as well. I don't know if you can see the brand name on there, but they are Junfu capacitors as well. So there are four of these 100 microfarad caps at 25 volts. I'm not even seeing a temperature rating on these capacitors whatsoever. And then there are four of these little guys right here. Junfu once again, 4.7 at 50 volt caps. These guys are some stubby caps, eight millimeters in diameter by eight millimeters in length. And then these guys over here are eight millimeters in length by four millimeters in diameter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place an order and get enough caps to fill this board. Plus I'll order some spares for stock as well. Well, I did go ahead and order some 1s at 50 and some 22s at 16, both Kimmet. Good quality, basic generic caps. They're definitely 105 degrees Celsius rated caps. And as you can see, they are leaded electrolytic capacitors. And for this board, the input board, I did opt for some Panasonic capacitors as well as some Rubicons. They're what I could find. They're what would fit. Okay, let's go ahead and test some of these capacitors that came off the board and just see what they check like. That one's nothing. These are all 22s at six, by the way. And that one is completely open. And that one is completely open as well. So I touch the leads, I get zero. So completely open. That one completely open as well. And that one completely open also. That one's completely open. That one's completely open. Oh, we have a winner, 24 ohms, one that actually reads. Anyhow, that's terrible for a 22 microfarad cap. And another one that reads 92 ohms. Oh, even worse. Okay, these are the 100s. I should get something out of these guys. Nope, absolutely open on that one. And totally open on that one as well. Now to the one microfarad caps. And nothing on that one. And nothing on that one. Let's go ahead and check all the caps now that I pulled off of the preamp board. So these are the 100s. That one's not bad, 0.45 ohms. I went ahead and replaced it anyhow. 0.43 ohms, 0 0.44, 0 0.39 ohms, and 0.55 ohms. Now for the little 4.7s, 5.9, Four point four, four point five, and four point six. So I did just as a preventative measure go ahead and replace all the capacitors on this preamp board, even though they all tested surprisingly good. And every single electrolytic on this board has been replaced. Even all the surface mount caps have been changed now. So we should be up and running once again, seeing how bad those caps tested. I did go ahead and dig out all of the epoxy. I see it did possibly compromise a couple tips of the traces. I did continuity checks to perfectly fine. I will put a little bit of coating back on them. Dug it off at the top of those caps there as well. Uh, there was one spot down in here I really couldn't reach. And so I left it be, but I think it's going to be okay. Okay, I know I talked about this previously, how little contact this had, but I got a close look at it and this foam right here, they actually laid it on top of the aluminum. 
That's the problem. They added an insulating layer, so effectively nothing was touching the heat sink except for this tip right there and that tip right there. So I ended up going ahead and just pulling the foam completely off of this board because this heat sink is actually lined up perfectly with the board. So any anything, any shim or anything is what the foam was actually doing. It's going to cause this to be away from the heat sink. And so I think they were trying to mitigate vibration and buzzing, but I don't think there'll be a problem here. Okay, so I have a pretty good application of fresh heat sink compound on the heat sink itself or on the amplifier heat source, whatever you want to call it. So I've got it up against it. I'm just going to go ahead and press down with just my hand. Oh, I heard it definitely. Look at the amount of transfer we have now compared to the way it was. And the heat sink is a carbon copy of the footprint right there. Well, I certainly do like that a lot better. I can actually see heat sink compound oozing out, well, at least on the three sides that I can easily see. So I think that's going to make much more contact. And I would hazard to bet that the reason this thing failed was because of inadequate heat sinking and it just got so hot it just cooked everything back here. It didn't cook the main filter caps. They test absolutely perfectly. And there's another board over here, right here. It's got a couple caps on it. They test perfectly fine as well. Just the caps on the amplifier board were the bad ones. And because of where this is and how it sits, I'm gonna add some heat sink compound to this little, well, it's not really much of a heat sink. But as you can see, it's just a little below that screw is where the heat sink is. So I went ahead and just added some heat sink compound approximately where it's going to go. And we'll sandwich the two halves back together. Well, I'm thinking it might be okay. I see just the smallest amount of compound starting to ooze out on one side only. Okay, here we go. Power is applied. Let's turn the unit on. Get a red light. I heard a click. And we get the speaker relay closing and listen to that. Wow, it didn't shake the room like that before. Now remember, I'm only using a little six inch speaker. I don't actually have the enclosure or anything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the dummy load and we'll get a little bit of current drawn out of it and just make sure it doesn't go instantly into distortion. We didn't get anywhere near this audio level last time. Previously, if I just barely, like probably at that point right there, it would start to distort. So let me connect the dummy load and we'll push this thing and see what happens. Okay, unit is connected to the dummy load. Let's power it on. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's actually dimming the lights. But I think it's up and running. It's good. It's putting out plenty of power at this point. Much, much more than it was previously. I think once again we have a repair on our hands. So now that it's all back together and it is working properly, I'm going to go ahead and squirt some RTV silicone down in here just to secure these capacitors that I stood up. I'll also go ahead and squirt some down in here. Now, the reason I laid these down, I wanted both boards to be exactly the same, and there wasn't physically enough room to stand the capacitors up right here. It would have hit the, the hot plate portion of it. So I went ahead and laid those down, did it exactly the same on both boards, just to make sure there wasn't any kind of an audio issue between them. Anyhow, that is it, the repair on the monitor audio RSW12. Just needed to change a bunch of capacitors. And I'm not kidding when I said I had to change a bunch of capacitors. Every surface mount cap, every capacitor on that main board got replaced. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the monitor audio RSW12. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. If you have a question, go ahead and shoot me an email. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye.